Hallelujah. Wonderful, wonderful Savior. We celebrate Jesus today. Yes. Glory to God. I will celebrate. Celebrate with me. Good morning. Good morning, my sister. We celebrate Jesus today. Hallelujah. I will praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you today, God. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Let's celebrate. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Let's celebrate Jesus. He is so good. Hallelujah. Celebrate. Sing unto the Lord. I will sing to him a new song. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. I will praise him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you today, God. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship you today. You are worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah. Hasn't God been good to you? Think of all the goodness in your life and we celebrate. Every day should be a celebration knowing we are alive, we are well, and all of the good things God has been doing in our lives. Let's celebrate in our praise. Hallelujah, sing. And we'll new song. Hallelujah, sing. I'm going to try it again. We're going to try it again. We're going to try it again. Hallelujah. We're going to try it again. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We worship him today. Worthy of all our praise. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. We're going to sing that again. Celebrate him. We celebrate in the goodness. Yay. Oh, glory to God. I will celebrate, sing unto the Lord. I will sing to him a new song. Let's celebrate. Yes. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise him, I will sing to him a new song, Woo. yes, hallelujah, 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 oh 
Lord, we worship you today, God. We praise and exalt your name. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name. Yes, sing unto the Lord. I will sing to him a new song. Yes. Mm. Sing unto the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. I will praise him. Oh, we worship you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship your name. Hallelujah. 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 Woo, glory to your name. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. I will praise him. Because he's worthy of all my praise. Oh, you may say, I don't have anything to celebrate. I'm homeless. I'm jobless. You're alive. You can talk. You can walk. You can see. So celebrate. Look for the good things in your life and celebrate today. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Oh, we worship you, Daddy. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Oh, how do we celebrate? We sing, we clap, we dance. Come on, let's put on those praise shoes and let's dance before the Lord. There is so many, there are so many things whoo, in our lives that we need to celebrate. A new song, hallelujah, whoo, hallelujah. Sing me. I will sing a new song, hallelujah, whoo. Glory, ah, come celebrate him, Woo. hallelujah, hallelujah, celebrate, hallelujah, celebrate him, hallelujah, hey, hallelujah, Woo. hey, a new song, hallelujah, hallelujah, Woo. glory, glory, I will sing a new song, Yay! Glory to God. A new soul. Hallelujah. Sing. Hallelujah. Glory. I will sing. A new soul. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory, 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 glory to God. We worship your Father. We worship you today. We celebrate, we celebrate Jesus because in you we have life and more abundantly we have peace, we have joy. Everything we need is in Jesus Christ and it's free. It's not cheap, but it's free. So today we thank you, God. We can celebrate you knowing we could come to you at any time. But whatever we have, you are always there. You are never too busy. You are never sleeping. You always awake 24-7 and today we celebrate the goodness of God. We thank you for your faithfulness, God. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. And most of all, we thank you for loving us. Such matchless love. This love cannot be compared to anyone else. The love of our Father, the love of our Savior, who went to the cross to die for our sins. So today we thank you for your matchless love your love that is limitless, your love that is always there. And so we praise you today, Father, and we say thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving your life for us, Jesus. And most of all, God, we thank you for your word, which is here to encourage, to build us up. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to try one more song by Eddie James. It's called Joy. When we have that relationship with God, we have the joy of God in our lives. Hallelujah. Oh dear. All right, this one is not working. It's coming. Hallelujah. Joy, joy, joy. Hallelujah. Got it there, but it just went off my screen. Glory to God. <laughs> We worship you today, God. We're going to sing about the joy of the Lord. Yes. You want to know what makes me smile? 
if you want to know what makes me happy, I've got the joy. And if you do not have that joy today, I want to introduce you to the person who can give you that joy. I have, even when things in your life are crazy, you can still maintain the joy. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. I got joy. I got joy. I got joy in my soul. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Have you joy, joy in my soul. I got the spirit of the living God. Yes. All over me. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Oh, Chloe. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Want to know what makes me shout? Hallelujah. Glory. The joy of the Lord. It is my strength. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, this joy is always there, even in the midst of the storm. I got joy in my soul. I got the spirit of the living all over me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I've got joy. I've got joy in my soul. I got the spirit of the living God all over. Mm. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> we thank you, Father. Because knowing you, we not, do not only have everlasting life, we have your joy. It's 24 7 in our lives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. It makes me say, Oh, I want to give him everything. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh, the joy of the Lord makes you dance. Hey. Yes. Makes me want to dance. Oh, it's the God's joy, your strength. Oh, yeah, yeah. His joy is my strength. His joy. His joy is my strength. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Your joy is my strength. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Mm. Oh. Mm. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. His joy is joy is my strength. His joy is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Can you say that today? Then sing it out to the Lord. Your joy is my strength. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you today. Hallelujah. Oh, such joy. It's not in what we say or do, but it comes from the Lord Almighty. And so today we want to thank him. Hallelujah for his joy we want to thank him for his joy hallelujah we praise you god we praise you god we praise you we acknowledge you as lord and savior 
our joy comes from you. The joy does not come from the bottle. The joy does not come from the marijuana. The joy does not come from just having sexual encounters. No, it does not come from all these things. Yes, it may be a minute or two or five minutes or an hour of some fun, but at the end of the day, we cannot say we really have joy if we're not a child of God, if God is not number one in our lives. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Can you say that today? Can you say the joy of the Lord is my strength? Because you see, this type of joy that we just sang about, it's not a joy that is um, influenced or changes based on our circumstances or based on the situations in our lives. No, because you see, this joy we're talking about is a joy that comes from only knowing the Lord Jesus, accepting him as our Lord and Savior. When we have an encounter with the great I am, when we have an encounter with Jesus, we are guaranteed this joy and again this joy does not go away based on the circumstances in our lives based upon what's going on around us but i'm telling you that joy is an everlasting joy because it comes from him and the only person that could remove us from that joy that could uh, um, allow that joy to be diminished in our lives it's not jesus it's not god our father it's us it's us, it's me. I'm the only person that could stop that joy or, or end the word that joy in my life. And so today I'm sure none of us want to do that. So we're going to talk about encounters. The question today is, whenever someone is in my presence, when someone has an encounter with me, when they leave my presence, what do they how do they feel now an encounter is when you meet with someone a personal encounter you deal with someone they hear they listen to you they, they see you they, they they see your actions they spend some time with you sometimes we only have like a five minute encounter with someone and you could think of the many individuals that you have had an encounter with you had you spend some time with that individual whether it's five minutes two minutes and you left that person with an impression i'm sure you did and sometimes you may not have noticed it but sometimes you may have been at an encounter with someone or if let's say for instance i know some individuals they don't like to be if the boss calls them in a room for a meeting or the boss wants to talk to them they're like oh lord i hate this i don't want to because something about that boss gives them a very negative thing maybe because of what the boss's actions or something that happened in the past Whereas there's some other bosses, when they said, I need to meet with you, there's a smile in that individual's face because they know from my past experience, it was good. So my question to you today, when someone, when I have, when someone has an encounter with me, how do they leave my presence? What is their experience like? What do they think about me when they leave me? Hallelujah. And when they leave me, what does it push them to do? What are they motivated to do? Again, when someone has an encounter with me, when they leave my presence, how do they leave? Sad, happy, you know, do they, do they long to be in my presence? And, and when they leave, what do I motivate them to do? Sad to say, some individuals, when they leave the presence of someone, it's all negative they get depressed they go everything they may start off the day well but because of this person's actions and the person's words they leave depressed they leave not feeling like going on in life they've leave feeling like you know their purpose is not there's no purpose for them because of how they've been beaten down so again the question when someone leaves my presence after having an encounter with me what do they leave what do they think about me what do they say about me now we're gonna to go to the perfect example Jesus Christ and we will choose as there's one woman in the Bible I want to talk about when she met with Jesus when there was an encounter with Jesus what happened and that's found in John chapter 4 and I'm not gonna read all chapter because it's very long but I'm gonna pick up a few of the verses here I'm gonna start at verse 4 I'm only reading from the New Living Translation Okay, it says here, he had to go through, which is Jesus, had to go through Samaria on the way. He was going, he was going through Samaria. 
Eventually, he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Joseph's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. So it's hot the time of the day, midday time, noontime. Soon, a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. Here, listen to this again. She was surprised that here was Jesus. He is a Jew, Jew sorry, and she's a Samaritan. Now, back in the days, the, the Samaritans were seen as the outcasts. The Jews were God's chosen people. And so the general thing about in those times, the Jews, they do not talk to the Samaritans because they think they were, they were above them. They were not in their category, put it that way. So she was surprised that Jesus being a Jew, Jew would talk to her. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. But sir, you have a rope, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket or a, yeah, or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? Hallelujah. Now she didn't know what Jesus was referring to. God said, if you really know who I am, you would, you, you would, you would give me that, okay? Uh, he said, you would ask me and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and the well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, you do think, besides, you do think you're greater than our ancestors? Do you think you're greater than our sister Jacob who gave us this well? Now, the well was given by Jacob, the, our ancestors, and she said, you think you're greater than him? you telling me you're going to give me living water? <laughs> Let's read on. How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, anyone who drinks of this water will soon will soon become thirsty again. Anyone that drank from the water in the well, they would soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I will give, they will, I will never, they will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling, a spring within, within them, giving them eternal life. Verse 15, please, sir, the woman said, give me this water. Give me this water. I want this water. Mm, she was excited. Please, sir, give me this water. Then I will never be thirsty again. And I want, and I won't have to come here to get water. <laughs> She's thinking of the natural. Let's read on. Verse 16, go and get your husband. Jesus told her, I don't have a husband. The woman replied, Jesus said, you are right. You don't have a husband and you have, you have had five husbands and you aren't even married to the one you are living with now. You certainly spoke the truth, Jesus said. Sir, the, sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place to worship while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerzim? Gerzim. Where our ancestors worship, Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father or this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him. For salvation comes through the Jews, but the time is coming indeed. It is now here when true worship, worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. The Father is looking for those who would worship him in spirit and in truth. Going on. 
For God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And there she is. She doesn't know she's talking to the Messiah. <laughs> Verse 26. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then the disciples came back, and they were shocked to find him, which is Jesus, talking to a woman. But none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her? Or why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village, telling everybody, come, come see a man who has told me everything I've ever done. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So she, so the people came streaming from the village to see him. Hallelujah. I love this story. So here is Jesus. I don't know why he was tired and this woman came and, and and some of you know this story but i'm gonna go through briefly she was a woman who was our lifestyle was not um should we say one that was approved by the lord <laughs> her lifestyle was was one where she had several men right she had five husbands prior to the one she this man that she has and that person was not her husband that's what the bible says and so here is it jesus knew this woman's lifestyle at that time, because she was a Gentile, she was a Samaritan, the Jews had no dealing because Jesus Jesus was a Jew. And, and, and the, the, in those days, the, the, the Jews were the chosen, were chosen one. They are the chosen one. But Jesus came so that he could make salvation available to everyone. Everyone could receive that. And so Jesus is here talking to her. And I'm going to try to relate this to ourselves. As a child of God, when an unbeliever may come around you or somebody may be in a distasteful lifestyle, let's say prostitution, homosexuality, a murderer, a thief, what is our reaction to them? Do we befriend them? Do we give them that nasty look that make them feel they're unclean? Here was it. Jesus of Exeter. He asked her for a drink and she said, well, you don't have a bucket, you don't. But most of all, she was like, why are you a Jew talking to me who was an outcast? But Jesus saw that soul that needed the Lord. And so you read and you could read the entire story. There was a conversation and Jesus is, she's talking about the water and she's thinking it's the natural water. And you see, we, we just sang about the joy. Now, when we come to know the Lord, that, that well, he says, he said, the water I'm going to give you would be an everlasting water, bubbling up, springing up within you. That refers to the joy of the Lord. It's, it's life-giving. And so when we come to know the Lord God, our Savior, Jesus, sorry, Jesus, our Savior, we invite him to our hearts. That's an everlasting water, the spring that bubbles up in spite of the situation, the circumstances, whatever's going on in our lives. We would not allow the situations to hold us back or pull us down. So Jesus is here talking with a woman. And we notice that from that encounter, and now let me read what encounter means. Encounter means, encounter means meeting with him. Maybe we say an encounter with Jesus, meeting with him face to face, or someone having an encounter with you, meeting with you face to face. It means coming into contact with him. It means to cross paths with someone. So here, Jesus, or someone that may bump into you throughout the day, during the day. And so Jesus, this woman came with, to Jesus and by him talking to her, he aroused that curiosity in her. I want to know more about this man. Who is this man? Are you greater than? Now, you see, he didn't come to her with condemning words. If he came to her with condemning words, she would not be interested in what he had to say. But what he said was out of love and compassion. So he rose our curiosity. Who is this man? I want to hear more. When someone comes in contact with me, am I judgmental? Do I beat them down or do they want to stay in my presence? This lady has something. When she speaks, there's just something within me that wants more. And so as Jesus spoke, she asked him for more. And he went on and he showed her. And then he asked her a question. And I figure he asked her this question so she could know who he was without him saying, you know, I'm the son of God. I'm the Messiah. And I came to set the captive free. And oh, no, no, no. Some of us, do you know who I am? I'm Reverend so, so, so. I'm the deaconess and I'm the deacon. Oh, no, 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 he didn't. Having an encounter with Jesus. As a child of God, we all should have had an encounter with him. And so 
are we like Jesus after having that encounter with Jesus we accept, accept accepted him as our Lord and Savior is our life like Jesus can someone when they come into our presence say I want to hear more I just want to hear more about you know why why is your life so different tell me more I mean I know you 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 Christian people y'all got your lifestyle and I'm my lifestyle are different but there is something tell me more do people say that to us and sometimes not everybody may say that even though we have a good attitude but the question is is my attitude the words I say and my actions is it pushing people away from me and from the God who should be reigning in me or is it drawing people towards me last week I spoke about having on the, 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 the um, breastplate of righteousness now I mentioned that and it should be shining it should be attractive it should be you know because the breastplate back in the days of the Romans when they wore that breast that breast plate it was not only it did protected them but it glowed it had a very it was beautiful when you looked at it and so we have on the breastplate of righteousness as a child of God that shows we are walking in the things of God we are walking a life that's up that's uh, that's pleasing to God we are walk is in we are in right standing with God we don't go stealing lying uh, fornicating adultery uh, adultery all of those stuff the things all the things we live a life that's pleasing to him so here is it is does my life shine do they see that glory of God on me that they want to be mm, I want to be close to you so Jesus went on and he asked her the question about her husband and she said um, I don't have none and he said you spoke the truth right there because you had five prior to this and some people may say oh that's rude but he said it in a very nice way but he wanted her to know who he was indirectly and he said um, this living water that I would give you you would never thirst again and if he had come across to her in a very harsh way pulling her down she would have left him and said, who you think you are? I know you guys think you're better than me. She was willing, even though he pointed out that need of a change in her life, the lifestyle that needed to be changed, she still wanted to hear what it is, what it is that this man is talking about. I want it. And so when he started talking to her, she forgot what she went there for. <laughs> she dropped the water pot and she ran into the village. Hey guys, come, come see a man that told me all things that I've done. It's just the Messiah. Come see a man. She left there with such joy, with such excitement. Mind you, as you study, as you study more in details about this woman because of her lifestyle, she was shunned by the world because she lived a promiscuous lifestyle and people didn't like her. So she came in the middle of the day when it's very hot most of us that's going through summer right now especially in america you know some days it's in the 90s wherever you live it's a hundred and you don't want to go there especially when it's in the middle of the day like 12 noon nobody wants to go out there and so um, if you research on it it would tell you many people people didn't go to the one at that time of the day but she went there because there was nobody around to shun her nobody around to mock at her nobody around to cast stones at her or tell her about her lifestyle she knew her lifestyle wasn't the best so she would go out when there's no one around to bother her. But there she met Jesus. That day, she got good news. And when she received that news, she was willing. She was motivated. After having an encounter with Jesus Christ, she wanted to hear more. And she left there with joy, running, telling others about him. She was motivated to tell others about this encounter that she had. Coming back to the question, when someone has an encounter with you as a child of God, how do they leave your presence? Do they leave feeling condemned? Or do some of them just walk away before you even finish saying what you have to say because of that condescending spirit you have, thinking you're better than the other, and you're telling them of what and what you got and what position you have in the church, or some individuals I heard, which is so sad, some individuals, they won't even talk to you if you don't address them as the reverend so, 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 or pastor or deaconess, you have to call their title. And if you don't call their title, they're highly upset. Mm. Is that like Jesus? I claim to be a child of God, but do I shun someone because they do not call me by a certain title? If I don't say reverend, if I don't say first lady, if I don't say bishop, whatever, whatever, or whatever title we have to ourselves, do I get mad? Do I push them away? If I know they have a lifestyle, do I embarrass them in public and oh you, you are so so you need to so do I do that? Let's look at Jesus. 
because as a child of Jesus, we should be like him. The question again, when someone leaves my presence, after having an encounter with me, how do they leave me? This woman is a perfect example. Her life was not the best. Jesus, yes, you pointed out where she needed help. So when someone is with us, what should it be like? One woman testified, a woman of God, she said, A woman said she heard a woman talking to over talk, talking to another man and the man came back and told her he said this woman he said keep doing what you're doing this is a Christian woman and he said this woman said to me whenever I talk with sister so-and-so I will not call your name I always want to get into prayer and praise and spend time in God's presence her love for God and her passion to live for him always pushes me to make sure I'm obeying God and walking in his will. Again, this is the testimony of someone who met a woman of God. She said, whenever I meet in prayer, whenever we talk, whether it's even on the phone, we don't even have to be in person. Whenever I talk with her, I always leave her wanting to get into prayer and praise. I want to spend time in God's presence. And you know what? Her love for God and her passion to live for him. This lady don't compromise, you know. I'm not saying she, she said she's not perfect, but she don't compromise. Her passion to live for him always pushes me to go make a check in the mirror to see if I'm obeying God and walking his will and to do God's will for my life. Wouldn't that be beautiful if someone could say that of each of us as children of God? When I leave her, she doesn't condemn me. But based upon what she says, it allows me to go and look on the inside, reflect into the word of God to see if my life is in, uh, is up to par with the word of God. So today, if we cannot stand or sit here and say, really, when someone leaves my presence, they can't say that. Or you know what? In order to know, I would be bold and I'll start asking people, when after coming off the phone with me, um, what what do what what's the vibes do you get from me while talking to me or, or what's the vibes you know you use your word and ask them be bold be bold that's something good for us to do you know it's like uh, some of us every quarter there is an assessment if you deal especially you dealing with customers they would always send out questionnaires to the customer how was your service with that what was it like today dealing with that customer um, associate uh, customer service associate how was it was she pleasant did she know a job description and all of these questions so in the natural world they do it and how much more has if we want to make sure that we are like Jesus and we're not quite sure or sometimes we think we are as I said that that reminds me of Paul Saul he was persecuting the Christians and he thought he was doing God's work and some of us because we uh, somehow we have this uh, spirit that's holier than thou or what should I say and we kind of exalt ourselves it kind of gets to our head and that humility just not there anymore we boast about who we are in God and oh God is doing so much in me and if your life is better you know it, it's in a condemning way and we don't even realize what we're doing we're chasing people away they leave our presence feeling so sad and you're like, I don't want to be like her. She thinks she's better than everybody. So I, I would put this out to you. I'll challenge you. Ask your relatives. Ask your friends. And some of them, you would know if they're, they're mocking at you. Because some of them, they would say something and laugh. You know if they're mocking, if they are not truthful. But you will know if it's truthful. Ask a few people, at least two. When you are with me, when you leave my presence, how do you feel? And say, tell me, I want the truth. And when you hear the truth, do not leave there being mad at that person. You go into the mirror, the word of God, and you say, God, I want to be like you. This is the Bible, the word of God. This is what I heard. But you know, God, mm -mm, I didn't even know that's the way I was. And that's the thing I think it is at all. I think it is with us. Many of us, this, that's not our intention, but we have gotten into a place where we've been there for a long time. And like Saul, we think we're doing God's work. Yes, we may be singing, we may be preaching and, you know, witnessing, but our attitude, is it like Jesus? When people leave our presence, do they feel condemned and belittled and dirty on the inside? Some people think I gotta make them know, say, say, we can do it in love, right? So that's your own work for this week. That's your challenge. And I hope you pick me up on that challenge. I'm gonna do it.
because you know why if we want to be like Jesus we want to know that 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 armor that 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 breastplate is shining we're glowing with the love of God that's it love 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 because God loved us he sent his son and because Jesus loved his father and he wanted to obey him and he loved the world that he never saw the people he knew not he was willing to sacrifice his life for us so it's all about the love of God it's not about me it's about the love of God and so that should be our determined factor that should be the main thing my love of them is the love of God in me do I love others the way God loves me when I look at Jesus in his ministry do I love like Jesus did and so again the question I know I've asked this question several times but this is the question God wants to ask us today when someone leaves my presence when someone has an encounter with me how do they leave my presence? Do they leave having a desire to know more about God? Do they leave asking, well, you know what? Tell me more. I, I want to know, but it's God you serve. You know, talk about healing. I want to know it's God. Why are you always so happy? Why are you always so joyful? One woman said she worked in a restaurant years, years ago. She was telling me, and um, she was a cashier there. And this guy would come in every day for his breakfast and he'd look at her and he'd smile. And she's with one man. He had this question and look, but she never said anything. She's always say, good morning. How are you doing today? Have a wonderful day. And be careful. Well, you know, she just encouraged this man. And one day he said, what is it about you, lady? I mean, I've been coming to this restaurant for like 15 years and there was no cashier. Who is so, why are you so happy in the morning? Who's happy in the morning? And she laughed, you know. So that answer, he said, who's happy in the morning? Why are you always so joyful? And she said, well because of the of Jesus Christ I accepted Jesus in my heart and you see she was able then he was he, she was able to talk to to witness to him because he wanted to know where she got the joy from he was surprised after visiting the, that restaurant for 15 years this was a new cashier she was a child of God she didn't go around saying I'm a child of God and put this big sticker Jesus loves you come to Jesus now nothing is wrong with that but you see if we put on those big stickers and we root to people and we grumpy oh my goodness that's a very bad testimony so if you know you're not in a place where your attitude goes with your sticker and take off the sticker please mm -hmm. please do or the bumper that you have in your car Jesus loves you and then you argue with people in the traffic mm -mm. anyway I'm gonna get back to what I'm saying so she was like wow because she always saw this question and look on this man until one he said why is it you always so happy you joyful who's happy in the morning so and I heard I'm like wow that's so awesome so let this be our desire to be like Jesus again the question after having after someone having an encounter with me how do they leave do they do they leave with answers questions answered that enhance their lives you know, I, I saw a man, I'm so mad at what's going on. I want to take my life. And, uh, why is it you so happy? The economy is like this. And then you're not worried. You're not worried about the economy. And then you could lead them to the Lord. Tell them, you know, yes, I may be out of a job or I don't know where I'm coming from. But, you know, I trust in God. And that's why I have the joy because he says he's going to take care of me. So today, let us go before the Lord. Let's not be too hot. And let's take the challenge. Ask someone, uh, two people at least. When you leave my presence or when you get off the phone how do you feel this woman this samaritan woman she wanted to hear she wanted more she saw this was a different individual and she ran and told others when someone leaves my presence this is my prayer to god even before they leave they would say you know what you answered a prayer you you answered there was something that was bothering me and, and because of what you said it, it it opened my eyes it pushes me that i could i know that i could go to god it makes me know that god loves me and it makes me know that god would accept me the way i am and then when they decided that they've received that they in turn will go and tell others remember jesus said when we became saved that he wants us to go and tell all others about him, preach the gospel. So as again, as I said last week, we don't have to be a missionary. We don't have to be standing there in the pulpit. But every day, our lives is a testimony. We are preaching something to the world by what we say and what we do. So the question, when someone leaves my presence after having an encounter with me, whether it's on the phone, whether it's in person, what would they say about me? Do they see the joy in me? Do they see the love of God in me? Are they, do they want what I have? Do they want what I have? That lady, oh, she's so grumpy. I don't even want to have business with that woman. That woman is rude. Do they want to have what? She is so cheerful. She made my day. You know, even when we're dealing with customer service, you know, I, I, years ago, sometimes I would get angry at people to speak at me in the customer service. They were rude. And I started asking, oh, uh, is everything well today? Um, 
that is good, you know. And, and some questions you ask them, and one lady say, oh, well, I'm so glad you asked because my day been going, to, and she start, she just wanted to vent, you know. So sometimes people would lash out because of what they're going through. Maybe they're having a broken marriage. Something is going on. And we cannot back, go back to them. They're rude, and you get back to them being rude. No, that's the difference with us. You just say something, something that's good. Or even if you see them in person and you see they grumpy, that cashier, you don't know, low. maybe she's working over time and they're not paying, and she's mad. And you could look at her, oh, you know what? Mm, you look tired. But you know, God is good or something like that. Or, oh, you have a beautiful hairstyle. Oh, that color red looks so good in you. And then you see that smile. Some of them look at you that way and then they start smiling and they open up. And then some of them even say, you know what, pray for me because these people in this place say, if I worry with them, they're going to make me do something. Pray for me, pray for me. Some of them would come out and say that to you and that is your open door. So again, when I get into contact with someone, do I allow, what, 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 what from that encounter, what do they leave with? Are they willing to say, that lady, I like her. Something about her. She got a good spirit, you know. She make me feel so good. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word again today. Thank you for reminding us of who we are in you. <clears throat> and we pray, God, <clears throat> that we would not take this word and put it aside and say, that is not for me. But we would say, God, show me the encounters that I've had in my life for the past week. Was it one that you could smile at? Did those individuals leave my presence or get off the phone saying, hmm, I feel good. I like the encouraging words I got from her. Or, mm, man, she's so into God. It, it, she loves God so much. I want to be, I want to do what she's doing. Does it, so, Lord, I pray for your strength today. I pray for your strength. God, show me. Show me, Lord. Here is in my life where I need to straighten up like the woman you showed her in a loving way the areas that she needed help in show me the areas that I need your help that I could go when someone comes in contact with me they have an encounter with me they can leave with a testimony a good good testimony of the goodness of you in my life so I give you praise in Jesus name amen and this time I want to leave those of you who do not know the Lord and you may be saying you know what I don't know they say to my family, it's hard for me to smile. I'm always upset. I'm angry. Because something always happening to me. Something after the other. If one thing, I ain't got no luck in this world. I ain't got no luck. They're me. Da, 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 da. And you, you're always mad. You're always upset. And you don't know why. I come to tell you today, like Jesus told the woman at the well, the water that he was going to give her is a spring of water, everlasting water, would be bubbled up in her, bubbling up in her. She does not need anything to quench that thirst that thirst of that hunger for joy that hunger for peace you see this woman didn't have peace and, and she felt abandoned she felt bashed by the society when he said when that water when he gave her that water no more would she be ashamed of her lifestyle no more would she be ashamed of of whatever she may have inherited from her family or some people may say oh everybody in my family grumpy that's who we are we don't talk to each other da, da, da. no so today i want to lead you to our savior who is the joy giver when he gives you that joy regardless of what your mama may have done or if your mama was your mama and your dad everybody in your family are crazy and they're always shouting and yelling they're gonna see that difference in you when you ask jesus to come into your heart you receive the joy of the lord so if you would mind say after me please father god thank you for loving me thank you for sending your son jesus to die for me god jesus forgive me from all my sins Take away this bitterness, all the pain and the earth over these years that have got me angry, mad at the world, mad at it. Take away all the bitterness. Take away all the sins, Father. I give you my heart today. And I thank you for filling me with your joy. Thank you for filling me with your peace. Thank you for filling me with your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm, that's how it is. And so what I want you to do, <clears throat> if you don't have any materials, feel free to email us at godslovenest at gmail.com. Or call us at 804-418-9493 if you need an encouraging word, if you need prayer, if you need a Bible, whatever you call us because we want to guide you in this walk. And now that you know the Lord, find a good Bible-believing church where you can get the Word of God and you can listen to the Word that I preach and the other good preachers out there. But do not leave yourself empty. You need to be filling. Now you know the Lord and you, and you start. And one of the ways you could start spending time in prayer, it doesn't have to be an hour. You start where you are. At least five minutes, you pray. And then you get yourself some very good praise music and you listen to the
angels praise music and you worship God you pray and you talk to God and every day you say Lord I thank you for your peace I thank you for your joy I walk in your peace I walk in your joy I walk in your love so thank you for joining us so I give you that in challenge and I hope that we would all take the challenge and ask at least two people after having an encounter with me whether it's on the phone or whether it's in conversation how do you leave feeling how do you leave feeling me do you feel refreshed or do I always pull you down? There are times, so many people, oh my gosh, I don't want to talk with her. She gets me so depressed when I get off the phone, I can't do anything. Oh Lord, I'm so depressed. You know? But then if there's someone like that who's not safe, if you're a child of God and that individual comes on the phone and that you feel that way, start praying. Every time that say, Lord, I want to make a difference in her life. I want to make a difference in his life. When they come on the phone and you start praying quietly while they're talking, and then you could just start and you'll see a change lord i want us to one and you give them the words you know there were times in my life when i was if you had a situation where you were mad you share that with that person but today i'm different why because of the joy of the lord and that's a good opening so as we go today let us seek to be like jesus having an encounter with jesus we have been changed and we should be changed if we haven't been changed we go back and ask him and having that encounter with him we saw the joy and the love that he showed let us show that to others so thank you for joining us today. Be blessed. Have a wonderful day. I'll be back on Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. where we will be declaring, declaring, we'll be confessing some the word of God, declaring the Lord's the word of God over our lives, over our health, over our finances, over our children, over our family. It's powerful. I've been enjoying it. I want you to join us Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'll be back next Sunday morning at 9 a.m. with more of what God has in store for us. Thank you for joining us. Be blessed. Have a wonderful day. Go forth in God's strength, power, and anointing, knowing you can and will do all things through Christ who strengthens you in your life. Anyone that has an encounter with you, you just say, anyone that has an encounter with me would leave me feeling uplifted, would leave me feeling energized, would leave me feeling, having that desire to push for a life with Christ, to maintain the walk with Christ, and to walk in their purpose. That should be our aim today. Be blessed. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day. God loves you. Take care.